Well, I just got back about an hour or so ago from Hall, Mega Hall number two. And here's some video footage from the hall itself of all the stuff that's there and the massive piles of stuff. So I'm going to show that right now. I haven't even looked at the footage yet. Um, it's a little bit... Lighting isn't really great, but should be able to see enough stuff to get a pretty good idea of what we're dealing with in the, over here. Once that's done, it's probably, I don't know, about 5 minutes or 10 minutes. I don't know how much footage I recorded, but um, I'm tired. It was a lot of work. Anyway, we'll get done with that. I'll show you the stuff that I brought back on this haul. Mega haul number two. I'm guessing that AT&T monitor sitting right there might go to that. Box, I'm not sure. box of power supplies. Gateway 2000. Intel, yeah. Grab that box too. Well, it's got a bunch of keyboards up there. Well, there's another AT&T monitor. Holy crap. And those those are definitely CGA. I wonder if those still work. Mm, the back of them have only the two rows of pins, but I wouldn't be surprised if, like I said, the cable that goes with them yeah. pulls it out to the 27 pins. First international computer. Huh. I didn't know they made monitors. Leo. Leo Data Systems. There's another AT&T monitor. Holy crap. Nice. 
another box full of keyboards down there. Wow. A whole bunch of old software and stuff back there too. Wow. Yeah, it's definitely going to be several, several rounds going through everything. Yep. So one thing I was thinking. So I called around on the e scrap prices. I even went down as far as Loveland. Uh huh. Um, the cheapest place is the. As long as what the heck is that for? I think it's to mount the radio on, kind of like, like what my dad built, but the absolutely jammed eye. Someone likes Jack Daniels. Oh, there's a whole bunch of motherboards. Oh man, boxes and boxes. Wow. Oh, there's another hard card right there. Sweet. Here's one of the portable 386s with the glass pads on the display. I've got the bags to them right there. So as you saw, there's still quite a bit of stuff to go through over there. Piles and piles of motherboards, piles of hard drives, piles of just stuff to go through. Barely scratched the surface yet again. Right here is two 386 compact luggables. These are the ones with the orange plasma displays on them. And they supposedly both work, so hopefully they do. One of them has a modified uh, a floppy drive from a five and a quarter to three and a half inch. Uh, I've got manuals to these, or at least one of them anyway. And they're both in bags. Look at that. A box of Bernoulli discs. Look at all these discs in this box for that Bernoulli drive. Absolutely incredible. Flexible disc cartridge. The Bernoulli box. And this is an iOmega branded uh, uh, box and floppies, or what you want to call them floppies, are really discs or 20 meg discs, I believe. And a whole freaking box of them. An old Connor hard drive, probably 30 meg if I had to guess its size there. I got another one right here. An ancient Maxter drive, San Jose, California. 340SY, probably a 40 meg drive. The size of that sucker. Must have been an issue there. So 
so we'll see if that works. If it doesn't, it might be kind of fun to tear that thing apart. It's got to be probably four platters in that thing at least. Three or four? Probably four 10 meg platters if I had to guess. All that circuitry on the bottom of that sucker. Two more hard drives I picked up. Manufactured for IBM Corporation. Quantum Pro Drive. Probably a 540 meg drive. Nope, that says 127 right there if I would just read what's on the sticker. This one's a 40 meg here, or yeah, 40 meg. I don't really feel like taking that out of the bag. Got another 386 math coprocessor. Number three. I wonder if there's any more of these over there. Who the heck knows? Found two more hard cards. These two are 40 megabytes. And since they're in anti-static bags, there might be a pretty good chance that these ones work. Here's something I bet you haven't seen for a long time, if ever at all. Sim expanders. 30 pin to 72 pin and 30 pin to 30 pin and... Oh, yeah. Those should be fun to play with. A whole frickin' box. This is only one box of two. I only grabbed one box this time, but these should be fun to try to sell. I don't know if there's any kind of market for these things, but when's the last time you saw these things? I sure haven't seen these for a very, very, very long time. And I guess a whole freaking box of them right here. Brand freaking new. Absolutely incredible. A very nasty Socket 7 system here. Found this card laying somewhere, so I went and grabbed it. What's left of uh, apparently a rat carcass inside of there. That's okay, a vacuum will take care of that. Kind of gross. Got a Max Door graphics card in it. I don't know what kind of processor's in it, but it's probably a K6 if I had to guess. As you can see, the capacitors are completely shot on this thing. So, but I grabbed it for the processor and the RAM and video card and CD-ROMs that are on this thing and I don't know if it'll be worth fixing this board or not. I could just replace those capacitors. I never had an ALI board before, so uh, I guess it could be an interesting comparison. It is an ATX board, so we know those ATX Socket 7 boards are still kind of a rarity nowadays, so... Yeah, really filthy. What appears to be a brand new 486 motherboard right here. Complete with a second processor. Look at that. A whole freaking pile of keyboards. Rather interesting ones. This one is a compact that I pulled out of there. I've never seen anything like this. It's got a speaker on it. It's got a really interesting proprietary connector on it, so I don't know if I'd ever be able to find anything that could actually use that, but uh, it's a pretty interesting keyboard. The fact that it still exists is impressive. Some good weight to that thing. IBM Personal Computer Keyboards. I don't know exactly what these things went to. I don't know if these are 5150 keyboards or what. But I've got four of them sitting here, and there was many, 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 many more to grab over there. Whew! There's some clicky keys right there. This box right here is a Pentium Pro. AT motherboard, as a matter of fact. It looks like it's complete with the socket 7 heatsink on it. And here is that AT&T 386 box. A little nasty, but clean that sucker up. Worked pretty good. It's an interesting power switch down here. That thing weighs a ton. You can see how many 
expansion slots are on the back of this sucker too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I guess they're labeled one through ten, aren't they? Ten expansion slots on this sucker. It's already got a network card in it. VGA card. Something else that went there. Might have been a SCSI card or something at some point. And a big old frickin' rubber bumper thing back here, I guess, to run all your cables through, because the cover here is missing, the top cover. I believe the cables would come out the back here, and I guess you would fish them through right here. Keep them all nice and neat looking, apparently. Well, that's a rubbery, bumpery kind of a thing there, so I guess you don't hit the back of the wall and damage it. Although these look like they stick out further than that, so... That probably defeats the purpose of that, I guess. Yeah, it's a big sucker. But this is going to get its entire video of its own. The uh, entire case, the top, top case here, the whole thing slides off the front. Through the front here. Guess we could have a peek at it right now, why not? We'll do a proper video of this thing at some point in the future. See the inside of that top cover there. You can see the massive hard drive that's in this thing. I mean, that's a massive drive. I mean, that's like... That's like two five and a quarter inch basically the size of those right there together the massive drive you know how big that is probably like 120 meg <laughs> you got the power supply up front there and a whole mess of stuff in here it's got these 30 pin sim cards right here this one's half of its populated Looks like ID. No, that's an MFM controller right there. Looks like. And then the motherboard itself has got RAM on it from what I could tell. I was looking at this thing earlier. It's a massive board in here. PS2 ports, as a matter of fact, on this thing. Which is kind of interesting. But yeah, this is a massive, massive, massive box. It's insane. But. <clears throat> When's the last time you saw an AT&T computer? Well, it might be sooner than you think because this is an AT&T computer. I think this is an old AT or an XT or a 286, something like that. I can't remember exactly what's on the side of it. There's a piece of paper on the side of it and I don't really care to look at it right now. But I got five of these Bernoulli drives. That's a single one there. These ones are dual ones down here. Of course, the low light, this damn camera doesn't want to focus. I have five of those things. And they've been sitting so long that they definitely need to have a good thorough tear down and cleaning. But again, they exist. These things are as heavy as a computer by itself. Uh, probably. 15 20 pounds I'd say they are really pretty heavy well I don't, 15 I'll say 15 10 to 15 pounds on these things these things by themselves are as heavy as this old AT&T computer up here and there's three of these things I guess I thought I brought two of them home but I guess I only brought one of them home but there's I guess apparently two others over there some kind of an interesting cover right here I have no idea what that's for. There's one of those old fi old fashioned floppy drives with the lever right there. These uh these take unfortunately it takes a special keyboard. It's a nine pin plug that looks like a serial port. Um and I think I did see one of the keyboards over there. But it was getting late and I was tired and I didn't really care to grab it. I'll be over there again at some point. So 
That guy can wait. I don't think he's even got a video card in him. I think it's like a terminal, but I'm not sure about that. I saw some equipment that AT&T stuff over there too that said something about phone service. I've got a I've got manuals actually that say something about a phone system. Let's look at that real quick. Yeah, here's one of them right here. Work group system. That's a binder full of something there. This is the other magic box of stuff. AT&T software service information. Group processor yet again. Work group system. User's guide system processor. So I'm guessing these might have been some kind of a server or something and some maybe some AT&T terminals were on it maybe. I don't really know. Got Here's something else. Remember that Super ID card that I showed you in the last video with the RAM? Well, check this out. Here's a VLB version of that card. Still NIB, sort of. But it's in here. IDE cache controller. Isn't that sweet? Data transfer up to 20 megabyte a second supports four IDE and dual floppy drives. Disk mirroring support, huh? So this is a RAID controller. Oh. Now wouldn't that be fun to play with? A VLB IDE RAID controller. Wow. Disk mirroring support, that means that it's gotta be RAID. RAID 1. I would guess. That should be fun to play with. And here's the book for the 386 Luggable. 386 personal per portable personal computer contents. There's all this stuff right here. This is this computer is going to get its own video. Um, I don't know if I've got two of these books or not. I'll have to look and see. I might. The plan is, is I'm going to sell one of these and I'm probably going to keep the other at least for a short time. So, it'd be really great if I had, uh, books for both. A box of 72 pin sims. And there's definitely a box of 72 pin sims in here. Including some that have never been used. 8 meg module. A whole bunch in here. I've got an entire box just like this of 30 pin modules as well. So you get the idea behind that. Oh, and there's even more. As that stuff just falls. Yes, there is another. Uh, I hate binders. You know, I really hate binders. I really wish that these companies, these worthless companies that made these books, would not make them in binders. I just hate binders with a passion. Anyway, so here's another one here. And that's what we're dealing with there. So, there's definitely... 100% guarantee, probably in the very near future, within this next week, unless I get extremely busy with something, video on these. Because I have been told that they work. So, we will find out. There's something else. Above disk. <clears throat> Maximizes performance of 286 and 386 software. No additional software required. Contains three and a half. So this must be a RAM drive. Use RAM. Use a hard drive as a extra RAM. That's uh, sealed up, folks. It's completely sealed. 
And I got a couple keyboards. This is an Expo 486 keyboard. Mechanical switch keyboard. Very nice. That actually feels really good. I like that keyboard. That feels pretty nice. This one I believe is also a mechanical switch keyboard. This has a copy of 1984-1985 on it, so I'm guessing this is an XT keyboard. And I apologize for the camera being red. I haven't changed my uh, white balance. So it is a gray keyboard, not a purple or red keyboard. Box of brand new five and a quarter inch floppy disks right here. Sealed, unopened. All right, let's move on. There's actually still more stuff. AT&T low level format utility on a floppy disk. Look at that. Can you guess what this is? One of at least two that I saw over there. Model M keyboard. And you saw in the video, there is at least two IBM PS1 or 2, but there's definitely a 1 and a 2 over there, so who knows, maybe there's an IBM 5150 laying around over there. And finally, getting down to the last few things, some boxes of stuff. It's a lot of work going through this stuff. <clears throat> I pulled this out of a case. It's a slot one baby AT motherboard, a Soyo board with EDO and SD RAM. I don't know if this is a VIA or a BX chipset, but we're going to find that out at some point. And frankly, the board looks practically brand new. Very little use, if any. Didn't have a processor in it, but that's no problem. Because in the next box... <laughs> oh, this is an interesting box of stuff here. Brand new. Unopened. Well, this one's not... This one's, un this one's opened. Pentium 2 450. The next two, however, are not opened. This one... Brand new box of three Pentium Pro 200 256s. Brand new, sealed, never opened. Right there. Brand new, sealed, never opened. Pentium 3 450. Never opened. Piles of Pentium 2s, Pentium 3s, slot 1s, obviously. A Pentium 3 pack, Pentium 200 MMX processors, right here. Sealed, unopened, theoretically, probably brand new. It's absolutely incredible. Sealed, unopened, brand new, Pentium 2 350 right there. Never been opened. There's another Pentium 2, looks like it's probably a brand new one also. Pentium 2 333. At least that's what it says. Nothing in that. Another brand new never opened Pentium 2 333 what is this? this is a 500 it's kind of a rare speed to see a 500 must be a Pentium must be a Pentium 3 yep Pentium 3 500 this is the non L2 cache on die version. You can see the cache 
Well, maybe you can see the cache sims right yeah, I can see them right there. And once again, the classic Intel heatsink does not contact the cache module syndrome there going on. Very typical with those. And we'll get down to the final box here in just a second. I grabbed not all, but many of the MFM hard drives that were sitting on the shelf there. All Seagates. Everex systems. Hopefully at least some of these work. These will be good to sell on eBay if they do. If they don't, I'll just probably tear one apart. <laughs> Make a video out of it. A whole bunch of MFM controllers. 8-bit one right here. Nice and small. In an anti-static bag. Another MFM controller. Another MFM controller. This card might need a little bit of help with you folks on. This card appears to be a video card. Nice gold top uh, chip right there of some sort. It appears to be a VGA card. It's one pin covered up, which wouldn't be a problem because I can just punch that hole out and use a regular monitor on it. But what gets interesting is it's got a connector right here as well as one way back here which makes me think that this might be a VGA slash ID controller combination for the XT style computers or 8-bit interface there were two of these over there that I saw at least so if anyone has any ideas about what this sucker is if I'm right about that or not here's the part numbers right here I might look them up too, but IBM 1987, so that might have come out of a PS2. There's quite a few items over there that look like they were PS2 items with the blue latches on the side of them. But, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting, uh, interesting card here. I mean, unless it's only a, a video card, and it could be, but I don't understand the point of these because they look like ID connectors. I haven't counted them to see if there's actually 40 pins on them, but there's two of them right here. Unless that's just for an expansion card of some sort that connected to that, but... I don't know. If you got any thoughts about that, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. And, uh, that should be an interesting card, if nothing else. I'll have to plug that into a system, see what happens. And I got another one of these cards these network cards so yeah that does it for this haul this time and as you can see in the video part of this video right before I went through all this stuff there's a lot more to go through over there I don't know when I'm gonna feel like doing it again but I think I've got enough stuff now to keep me busy for a long time here. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Anyway, take care, everyone. Peace out.